Hi, let's take a look at how I plan the route. Once I figure out where I'm going, I get the maps. I try to get the digital maps, but if they're not available, paper will be just fine. So I got these maps in an online store in England, but there's a really good store also in Germany. You can find the links below. Take a look at this. Be a pioneer. I really like that. These maps are pretty good. There's a lot of detail, even though they're, the scale is 1 to 100,000. Then I just uh, basically just look around and see if there's any trails already. I figure out that there is this Arctic Circle Trail, which is marked here. But there are also some other smaller trails, which seem to be just like rough ideas of what you can do. Even though I spend a lot of time studying the maps, I very quickly switch over to Google Earth. Google Earth is just an incredible tool to get an idea of what kind of landscape you can expect once you get there. And I know that I'm going to approximately this area, basically just zoom in and start looking around. Start, I start looking for interesting features, I start looking for you know anything that might be it might be of interest, something that I want to see. Yeah, I just want to get a rough idea of, of where I want to go and a similar thing that I do with the maps, but uh, with different data. Okay, so I've studied the maps for long enough and then I've been looking at Google Earth for a long while and so now it's time to start drawing the route. Because I want to use both maps and GPS for navigation, I need to overlay the maps on Google Earth. Here, I'll just add an image layer, which will include the portion of the map that I have scanned. Now comes the tricky and probably the least precise part of the process. I need to use these tools to make it, to make it fit. That can sometimes take surprisingly a lot of time to get it right. The point, of course, is not to be 100% accurate, but you want to get it as close as possible because the accuracy of your route is going to depend on that. To get this right, look for prominent landscape features. In this case, for a glacier, lakes, there's even a road here. So, of course, you want to get this as close as possible. Once you have the map layered over the satellite image, that's when you can start drawing the route. You just create a new path. I want to follow a path that is here marked from this road. So I just zoom in and I start adding the points. The end result for this particular track looks something like that. A route that goes from Kangerlussak to the ice cap and then from the ice cap to a place called Kellyville and then from there onwards towards the sea. One of the things that I always try to do is also draw some alternative routes. It's always good to have some kind of an option to try something else. Here for one section I created an alternative route that is of the same distance. These both sections are of the same distance. But this is the route that I'll most likely take. It looks much more interesting on the satellite images than, than the other one. So the point is not that I would follow that route exactly as I draw it. I use that route in combination with the map and compass to position myself when I'm out there. So it doesn't even matter if I stray away from it. And if I know that I'm you know, a kilometer away from the route, I can still find my way on the map and then use the compass and what I see out there to know where I am exactly. So once I have the routes ready, I export them. I import a route that I've created and here is the route for that first section. I give it a name. And save the route. 
I repeat the process for all the routes. Now I'm ready to transfer the routes to the GPS watch. Let's take a look at what I have now here. So navigation, routes, and there they are. Let's take a look at the first one. Okay, so now I have the routes in the watch and the next thing to do is to put them on the map so that I can print the maps. So the easiest way that I found to do this is that I, that I take a screenshot of the route and then once I have it, I open it here and then I select the route, copy that, paste it here. This again requires some adjusting and resizing. Once I get that for all of the maps, I cut them up to the size of the sheet that I would want to take with me, which is A4, and then I'm ready for printing. Now the whole process might seem a little bit laborious, but I get three things out of that. Well, the first and most important thing is that I get to know the area really, really well. For example, when I was doing this for Iceland and then I was flying over Iceland, I, it felt like I've been there. The other thing that I get is a fairly accurate route, which I can then use for navigation and I know where I'm on the map. The third thing that I get are my custom routes printed on the map. Even though it might seem like I do a lot of planning, and actually I do a lot of planning, I still leave a lot of things to chance because I don't want to plan the adventure out of the adventure.